Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I'm going to be reviewing V Commandos, along with one of its expansions, Resistance. V Commandos is set during World War II, and it's about completing stealth missions to disrupt the operations of the Nazis. One thing that's really cool about the game is that you have a lot of different ways to set it up. So you can either choose to play an operation, such as Operation Greatsword that I have right here, or you can just play a quick one-off game by choosing one of the terrains and trying to reach its goal. So in this case, I just grabbed a battleship because it's part of Operation Greatsword. All the information you need to decide what to play is also basically embedded in these operation cards. For example, up here on the top right, you know about how long they think it's going to take to complete Operation Greatswords. You can choose your scenario based on how much time you have to play. And you also know how many commandos you're gonna need to control. For a solo player, that just means you pick three commandos and run all three of them. But if you're playing a multiplayer game, it's cooperative. You just split them up as you like. The operation cards also tell you which terrain you're going to need. So in this case, we know that for Greatsword, we need to beat the battleship round and then go into the central courtyard and beat that. And the second card will also give you some special rules for how to handle those different terrains during the operation. So every terrain will have its own goals and rules, but then the operations spice things up a bit as well. So we know that the first train that we would need to get out and set up to play this is the battleship. So all you have to do is find the battleship card. Again, it'll tell you how many commandos we'll be playing during this round. Basically what will happen is if you add more, the alarm automatically goes off because you're trying to be stealthy. And once you add too many people, they can't hide anymore. And then there's a convenient list of different supplies you'll need to set the terrain up and a really nice visual of how everything should look. So in this case, you can see we're imagining that there's a battleship in the middle of this terrain and we're trying to blow up targets on either side of it. All setups in V Commandos are made up of a different arrangement of tiles. So basically you just look at the picture and boom, there's the setup. The tiles with a darker outline are indoor tiles. The ones that are lighter are outdoor tiles. And the other thing that's kind of interesting about the game is that while you will just have an assortment of small, medium, and large tiles to arrange, it doesn't actually matter which ones you pick that's aesthetic. You just arrange whatever combo of small, medium, and large tiles it says to do on here and you were good to go. So here's what we ended up with for the battleship, and this would be the terrain that our various commandos are working through, trying to get here and here to blow up the targets. The last extremely important component for this terrain is the alarm, which we're gonna talk about in just a moment. So once you've set up your terrain, then you get to choose your commandos. In this case, we'd be choosing three of them because that's what it's specified on the card for this terrain. And we would have a choice between the sniper, officer, scout, Medic and Sapper. Not only do you have a choice between different commandos with different special abilities, but each commando has its own two configurations to choose from. So you can play the blue side or the tan side, depending on what you think is going to suit your needs for a mission. So part of the fun of the game is choosing commandos who you think are going to help you. Or, I mean, if you really want to make it painful, you can pick ones that aren't very helpful. But choosing who to take in with you determines your starting equipment and special abilities that will be accessible to you as you play. Each commando card is also going to tell you a little bit about itself. You'll have a starting weapon, and each of these is going to have a little information. So a cult, you roll one die to see if you've hit, which isn't the best. And you know that if you fire it, it makes a lot of noise and it'll trigger an alarm. That's different for, say, the medic, who on the tan side has a silent weapon, the sten, for which you can roll two dice. So some of your weapons are stealth and some aren't. You also know what starting equipment you'll have as well as how much equipment you can carry in general, which is basically your weapon in, in these two spaces. And you'll also see how to calculate for your actions. By default, each commando has three actions per turn, but this plus one up here indicates that if you wanna take two actions on a turn, you can actually store your third one for the next turn and then have a larger turn next time. So thinking about tempo and what you need to get done, maybe waiting before you go into a dangerous situation until you have full resources to get out of it is an essential part of gameplay. The other thing that's key is these minus ones will also tell you something, which is that as your commando gets wounded, you lose actions for them. So basically, wounded soldiers can do less. So if one of your commandos gets hit, not only are they hurt and closer to dying, but they are less effective on the turns after they have been hurt. Each commando also comes with two double-sided tokens. So here is our medic when he is stealthy. Here he is when he's visible. You can see the alarm. Here he is when he's wearing a German uniform, which you can do as a way of being a little extra sneaky in the game. And here he is when he's hurt. So there are really obvious visual markers for the status of each of your commandos as you play. Turn structure in the game is really simple. You just follow four steps. The first thing you're gonna do is draw an event card. This is gonna give you some sort of special condition or rule for the round. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. This one, drowned out, 
is good because it means there's been an explosion nearby and you're more likely to stay stealthy. Good times. Once you've drawn your event card, then it's time to take your commando actions. As I said, there's a default of three per commando, but you might get more if you've saved actions or less if you've been hurt. When they're first entering the board, each commando has to spend an action to come in to one of the open trap doors up here on the map. So our medic could decide to pop up right here for his first action if he wanted to. Or since there's a second open trap door, he could have come up here. There are also closed trap doors that start out closed, but you can take an action to open them. So if you need to escape, but you don't want to go back to places that you've been, then there are potential other routes out. So once you're on this terrain, the name of the game is stealth. There are a lot of things you can do in this game that can get you seen. And then once you're seen, it doubles the number of guards that are going to come in through these checkpoints down here during the enemy phase. And it's going to affect the movement of those guards if one of your commandos is visible because they will swarm anyone that they can see. So your best chance of success in this game is to stay stealthy for as long as possible. But that's a lot harder than it sounds. Even moving into a medium tile, if you don't spend two actions to remain stealthy, can cause a stealth check where you roll a die. And on a roll higher than two, you'll stay stealthy. But if you roll a one or a two, you'll see an eye on your die, and that means that you've been spotted. You need special powers to sneak onto a large tile, so you'll definitely be rolling stealth checks here. And you also have to roll stealth checks if you enter a tile that has an enemy soldier in it. So throughout the game, you're gonna constantly be taking risks of being seen, and you need to make the smartest plays possible in order to navigate where you need to go. You're still not gonna to totally luck out, which is part of the fun. Even the doors can present an obstacle. So we have a door here and a door here, and they're open because of the gray. But if you come up here and you don't have a crowbar, then you're gonna to have to shoot the lock with your gun and potentially make noise if you don't have a silent weapon, which will of course trigger the alarm. Another thing that's fun about the game is that if you do trigger the alarm, you have one chance to go turn it off and convince everybody that it was a false alarm. But if it goes off for a second time, it remains on for the duration. So maybe you can make one mistake, but don't make two. Once your commandos have all come onto the board and done their actions, you're gonna have an enemy phase where you draw enemies from a bag. This is just a random jewelry bag that I have, but I, this is what I use. So when the alarm is not triggered, then you just pull an enemy for each door. So there's essentially a truck driver that's coming. Interestingly, I drew two of these null signs. So here we would have a guard. Here, nothing would happen this turn, but we would remove these tokens from the game and add a couple of nastier enemies to the draw bag in their place. Just like you, enemies will have dots on them to show how many dice they roll when they're trying to hit you. So this side has one pip, this side has two. You'll just be playing with different sides depending on the scenario that you're playing or how hard you want your game to be. Once enemies are on the board, they perform the enemy movement step, which is pretty easy if everyone is still stealthy. If you don't have any visible commandos on the board, the enemies will move based on what the event card tells you. This one's got a question mark, so we'd actually just overturn the next one and boom, we know the enemies are moving north. If, however, one of your commandos is visible, they'll swarm the one who is. Or go to the nearest one that is, if you have more than one commando that they can see. So as long as you're stealthy, at the beginning of the turn, you can actually anticipate enemy movement and plan accordingly. But once you're visible, all bets are off. After enemies have moved, they'll take their shots at you. You have a cleanup phase. Then you draw another event card and continue play. And when you're rolling dice, the terrain that you're on lets you know the value that you need to roll in order to hit someone. So large terrain is more dangerous. That's why it's got a two down there in the bottom right corner. If you roll a two or better, somebody's getting hit. For a medium tile, you need to roll three or better but on a small tile, you need to roll four plus. So getting shot at on a small tile is a little safer than being shot at on a large one. So overall, expect to be showing a combination of good planning and careful play with a dash of luck thrown in. Also, I'm gonna talk really quickly about the V Commando's Resistance expansion, which is one of the expansions you can get for this game. It doesn't change the essential gameplay, but it does add some spice. You're basically just gonna get some more terrain tiles, small, medium, and large. Definitely like the touch of adding a bathroom. You'll get some new event cards, some new operation cards, a couple more machine gun nests, but then you'll also get some stuff that changes your gameplay. You were already able to get pretty cool weapons, medicine, crowbars, interesting loot during the game, or if you get really unlucky and draw some bad loot, somebody spots a body. But the Resistance expansion offers gas barrels, airdrops, and binoculars, which are actually kind of cool because they let you mitigate your luck a little bit more. You'll also have some new units, so there are new tokens that represent resistance fighters that you can escort out of hostile territory. 
There's some new German units just to kind of keep things interesting. And it introduces the guard dog and those are able to sniff you out more efficiently and can be both fun and kind of scary. You'll also get three new commandos, once again, each with two sides. You'll get the spy, the saboteur, and the SOE agent, all of which are good fun and their equipment adds a little bit of extra juice to the game, especially if you've already been playing a lot of operations and you want to do something a little different. This expansion will really kick it up a notch for you without changing the game that you've already decided you like. So now for some final thoughts. Overall, I really like the commandos. And one of the reasons I like it, especially for solo, is that the AI is very easy to run. The spawning points are very clear, the AI turn is very fast, and you can get right back to puzzling out your decisions as quickly as possible while also maintaining a challenging opponent to go up against. I also like that for new players, V Commando has some training scenarios in the box so that you can familiarize yourself with the rules a little bit more slowly. By going through the limited tutorial scenarios first, you're going to feel a lot more comfortable when you jump into the missions. And that's actually something that I wish that more games did. I think that it's really nice that Triton Noir took the time to add some tutorials to the box that are doable and that don't make you feel overwhelmed with the entire game all at once. And then when you get down to it, the fact is that V Commandos is a really fun game. I really enjoy trying to puzzle out where I should move, what I should do first, which commando should do what, so that we have the highest chances of remaining stealthy or of turning that alarm off if we inevitably set one off. The game is really hard, especially because sometimes you're just not gonna get lucky and you're going to get spotted and then everything's gonna go crazy. But that's part of the fun and the drama of the game. There is a lot of dramatic tension in trying to sneak around, in trying to frantically escape or turn the alarm off or do something when things go badly. And the game gives you a number of different ways to cope with this. You get special powers, cool items, German uniforms. And in the expansion, you have both new commandos to work with and you get added challenges like dealing with guard dogs, which I thought was a really cool addition to the game. All of the elements of the game come together to really form a fun experience every time you play. And unless I get really lucky in my die rolls, every game ends up being a nail biter, which honestly is just the way I like it. I also like that the game can be adapted to suit the amount of time you have. You can either play one scenario or you can combine them together to create a full mission. And that's something that I also appreciate. If I wanna play V Commandos, but I don't have a ton of time, I have some options there. That said, V Commandos isn't a perfect game. There is the occasional rules ambiguity, although Board Game Geek can help you work those out. And I think my biggest issue with V Commandos isn't actually its fault. It's that it's a stealth game, but also a board game. So dealing with stealth checks is always gonna mean a die roll. And that means that unlike in a stealth video game, which is basically my favorite type of video game to play, the amount of skill that you have is just not enough to get you through, sometimes you're just going to get unlucky no matter how well you plan. And while that creates a really fun board game, it doesn't always create the stealth experience that I really want. So if you're looking for a stealth game that feels like Dishonored, then V Commandos just isn't going to do that for you. It's a really fun game and the stealth aspect of it is enjoyable, but it's still not going to be stealth the way that you're thinking about if you're playing, say, Assassin's Creed on your computer or console. So on that note, I'm actually really looking forward to seeing the Assassin's Creed board game because Triton War is also publishing that and it's going to be the next iteration of the V Commandos system. The only other issue with V Commandos is that it is not actually very easy to get. If you want a copy of the game, you need to go to Triton Noir's website and order it from there. You can't just go to Amazon or Cool Stuff or your friendly local game store and pick it up. And then just a few notes on the Resistance expansion. So Resistance is basically more of the same. It doesn't fundamentally change the way that V Commandos plays. However, it does add some really nice elements to the game. You get more missions, more terrain, new commandos with cool abilities, and then a few surprises such as the aforementioned guard dogs. So if you like V Commandos, you're gonna wanna spice it up. Something like Resistance is a really good investment in a game system that you definitely like. And it'll just give you more to enjoy, which for me is something I generally like in an expansion. So all of that said, V Commandos is a really fun game. I really enjoy it. I'm happy every time it hits my table and I give it an eight out of 10, a dice tower seal of approval.